all right everyone thank you for tuning in to the second video i greatly appreciate the support that was shown on the first video and for everyone who subscribed i would really appreciate if you're watching this to subscribe and turn your notifications on it really means a lot so in the second video we're going to cover vwaps and we're going to keep it very simple we'll start with what a vwap is a simple analogy for a vwap and how you can view it the different types of vwaps and then using a time-based vwap for a quick top-down approach and sort of understanding how the battlefield is looking like using higher time frame to lower time frame approach okay so here is an image that i created i think this was towards late last year yeah october of 2024 these are all in my highlights by the way i created these from scratch it took a lot of time but what i'm going to be doing is taking some of these images and breaking them down using videos i've gotten a ton of requests for that so quick history lesson vwap stands for volume weighted average price and they were created in the 80s as a benchmark for institutions to determine the quality of their order execution basically like a measuring stick to determine if buying or selling was being conducted at favorable prices and the formula is pretty straightforward i would highly urge everyone whatever indicators or parameters you're using to understand how they're being calculated so you're not being redundant in your system or canceling things out or adding noise to your system so vwap is just a summation of the price times the volume divided by the summation of the volume hence the name volume weighted average price a simple analogy of vwap is prices under the vwap we think of sellers being in control obviously this can get a little more complicated if you add some context to it but we're going to keep this simple so price under sellers in control prices above we could say the buyers have the upper hand you can think of it as the front line of a battlefield or a coarse line in the sand in a sustained downtrend you'll see that something like an anchored vwap which if you place it on a major pivot will sometimes act as a general area of resistance and once this resistance is flipped you'll see that the trend begins to gain some momentum and flip in the other direction again keeping it extremely simple so due to the dynamic nature you can view these as dynamic points of controls i will cover that concept but if you have been following me for a while i've made constant content highlighting what a point of control is and what that means it's just an area where the most amount of time or volume was transacted so there's a volume point of control and a time point of control but more on that in another video um the only person i've heard describe it as a dynamic point of control which i think is very clever and made complete sense to me uh when i first heard it was the flow horse on twitter so go ahead and follow him and he puts out some phenomenal content so shout out to horse okay so the types of vwaps there's an anchored vwap which basically allows for the selection of a discretionary anchor point and what you could do is place it at a low or major pivot low or major pivot high and you can you can use it in very clever ways and we can probably make another video on that then you have the time-based vwap so these vwaps reset based on fixed time periods so for example if you use a yearly vwap at the end of the year the beginning of the next year that vwap resets completely same goes for daily weekly quarterly they will all reset to a new starting point and then you have the rolling which basically calculates from the end point of the previous vwap so for example for a seven day rolling vwap it will not reset like a weekly vwap it will continue to calculate the new vwap based on the end point of the previous one so i hope that makes some sense now moving on you can use a multi-time frame vwap approach to establish who's in control on different time frames as well as establishing areas of interest and this could be done in a very quick manner in addition to this if you use a standard deviation bands on the VWAP. You can look for strong or weak assets that are trending or showing weakness, and you can observe reactions from the edges of these bands. With confluence, these can also present great opportunities to search for entries or potential exits, especially when used in a system along with other data. So in short, VWAPs are great for determining who is in control, buyers versus sellers, and to mark out areas of interest on the metaphorical battlefield. All right, I hope that made sense. What we're going to do is actually bring up Bitcoin, and we'll do a quick scan starting from the yearly down to the session VWAP. And this is the yearly VWAP. Pretty straightforward to add VWAPs. I know there's a bunch of sweet indicators where you can have multi time frame VWAPs. Personally, and this might be not the most efficient way to do it, I just have multiple VWAPs and I just turn them on and off and have the visibility set so that on different time frames, different VWAPs show. But if you go into indicators and type in VWAP, you'll see the basic volume weighted average price indicator on trading view. And then you can go in and edit this. You can have it as the yearly anchor period. And then it has all these other options for month, week, 
week session. So we'll just go from year probably up to the weekly, just as a quick example. Then you can have the band multiplier on. You can go up to three standard deviations. And I usually have the lines turn off. I'll just have the band fill on. So you can go in and set these to your preferences. So currently we have the yearly VWAP on, on the daily. And as you can see, towards the beginning of this year, we lost this yearly VWAP and it just resulted in it being resistance since then, which led to the rollover down to the 70s. And then around late April is when we reclaimed this, this VWAP. So as I was discussing, you know, it's basically like a coarse line in the sand to determine if buyers or sellers are in control. So as you can see, once this yearly VWAP was flipped decisively, it proceeded with I think this is okay. So late April, we had around a month of very strong uptrend price action. And then since then momentum was lost. And then you can see that recently we just bounced off the standard deviation band of this yearly VWAP. This is where we got this reaction. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go to the quarterly. The quarter started on the 1st of April. In the beginning, you know, obviously we're just developing this price action and volume is being accumulated. And then you can see basically this was around the middle of April is when when we started consolidating right above that standard deviation band. And since then, we've basically separated from that standard deviation band. This is the one standard de deviation band. You can throw in the two and three just to see how strong of an uptrend this was. And then around the end of May is when we uh, saw this loss of momentum. And recently we see that we got a bounce from the one standard deviation band of the quarterly VWAP. So then moving on to the weekly VWAP, we can see that the week of the 18th, right around prior all-time high was 110 that general area you could see towards the tail end of that week it started getting flattened out as we failed to break above prior all-time high decisively and broke back down and then we had a retest so you can see this view up started to flatten out and then the week after that basically this was trending lower i mean this is pretty straightforward you don't have to have a view up to see that we were in a downtrend but you could see that it provides with some general areas of interest that you can look for for continued weakness sustained weakness or things to be flipping in the other direction where there's strength. And with this current VWAP for the week, it's migrated to around 104.2, 104.3. So you can look at this as kind of the general area that you want for Bitcoin to hold if there is to be more continuation here. And if it's lost decisively, then you can start being a little bit more defensive, at least on the weekly time frame or when you're forming your buys for your ideas. Now, if we move and drop down to a five minute Bitcoin chart, and then we're throwing on the session VWAP. And here I'm just showing different ways that you, I mean, it's kind of limitless what you can do with this, depending on your creativity or your approach. I've turned on the two and three standard deviation band. What you can do here is you can mess around with this. You can make this 1.52, 2.53. Just as a quick example, I've turned these two on where I've added two and three standard deviation bands and we've dropped this down to a session VWAP. So you could see on the fifth, um, you're moving sideways. There was an attempt to break up. We're tapping the two standard deviation band on the session and then roll over. Got an underside retest of the session VWAP and then the downtrend basically continued. And then if we move forward to Thursday, you could see that one standard deviation band was basically acting as support until this was lost. We got some sideways price action. So that basically covers a quick example for a top-down approach. I hope this was helpful. I'm trying to keep these as short as possible. Feel free to drop your feedback. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Uh, we basically covered a brief primer on VWAPs, the different types of VWAPs, and using time-based VWAPs for a quick top-down approach approach. Um, if you use this with, with context and confluence, you can look for a quick scan to determine which side is in control to formulate bias for your trades and to look for general areas of interest. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.